Want 10% off your MTG singles? Go to Flipside Gaming and enter the promo code POWER in all caps to receive 10% off $10 or more. Want to see extra videos? Sign up to our Patreon and get access to our Discord, early access to videos, Patreon-only videos, and much more. Need a better life tracker? Download the Gauntlet app for your phone. It keeps track of your life totals, counters, win rate, and so much more. It's free, so go check it out. More info is in the description. Thanks for watching. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to Playing With Power MTG, where we play with the most powerful cards in the most powerful formats. Our Season 3 premiere is here, and we have four commanders from Throne of Eldraine ready to duke it out at a competitive table. A quick thanks to all of our Patreons for their support. We really could not do this without you. If you'd like to become a patron, please check out the link in the description below, and check out some of the perks our patrons get. You can also show your support by liking this video and subscribing to our channel if you're not already a subscriber. It really helps out a lot. Let's start out by showcasing our fighters this evening. First, we have Garrett, piloting Chulane, Teller of Tales. Originally played in our season finale last season, Garrett hopes to show what this combo deck can truly do at a competitive table. Garrett's opening hand contains a Felwar Stone, Manipulate Fate, Yava Maya Coast, Enlightened Tutor, Temple Garden, and Atlanta War Elves. Next, we have Folger, piloting Alela, Artful Provocateur. This deck aims to control the board while using Alela for additional advantage to close out the game. Folger's opening hand contains a Godless Shrine, Mana Confluence, Smothering Tithe, Mana Crypt, Cursed Totem, and a Mystic Remora. After that, we have Might, playing Kenrith, the Return King. This five-color deck uses Kenrith's many abilities as a toolbox, and eventually it's a win con through combo. Mike's opening hand contains a Command Tower, Windswept Teeth, Arcane Signet, Pyroblast, Noble Hierarch, and Assault Ring. Finally, we have Ryan, piloting Corvold, the Fake Cursed King. Another king at the table, Corvold seeks to use Food Chain to gain infinite casts and infinite sacrifices to win the game. Ryan's opening hand contains a Finale of Devastation, Priest of Titania, Final Fortune, Arid Mesa, Noxious Revival, Gamble, and an Overgrown Tomb. Without further ado, let's kick off this grand gesture of gargantuan grappling for greatness. Ryan wins the Gingerbread House Baking Contest and gets to start us off. Ryan plays an Overgrown Tomb into play untapped, paying 2 life. He casts an Exploration. He plays an Arid Mesa as a second land for turn. He passes. Folger plays a Mana Confluence for turn. He taps his Mana Confluence for a Mystic Remora. A turn one fish is pretty brutal, but it resolves nonetheless. He follows up by casting Mana Crypt. He then plays a Talisman of Dominance. All through dumping his hand, Folger ends his turn. Garrett plays a Temple Garden into play untapped, paying two life. He casts a Land of War Elves. Garrett gives the turn to Mike. Mike plays a Command Tower for turn. He casts a Soul Ring. He taps the Soul Ring to play an Arcane Signet. He taps the Signet to cast a Noble Hierarch. Also done dumping his hand, he passes to Ryan. At the end of Mike's turn, Ryan cracks his Arid Mesa to fetch up a Badlands. Ryan starts off his turn by casting Gamble. He searches up a card into his hand and then discards a card at random, which is a Verdant Catacombs. With nothing else to do for now, he passes to Folger. During his upkeep, Folger loses his Mana Crypt trigger and takes 3 damage. Also during his upkeep, he pays for his Mystic Remora. He plays a Godless Shrine into play untapped, paying 2 life. He casts Smothering Tide. With two big advantage engines on the board, Folger ends his turn. Garrett plays a Tropical Island for turn. He casts a Felwar Stone. He follows up by casting a Manipulate Fate. He exiles Foresight, Dryad Arbor, and Eternal Scourge, then draws a card. All through, he passes. Mike plays a Windswept Heath for turn. He cracks it for a Tropical Island. He casts his commander, Kenrith, the Returned King. Mike jokes that it seems super slow getting his commander out, and then he realizes it's only turn two. Everyone laughing, Mike passes. Ryan didn't get the land drop he wanted for turn, and settles on casting a Priest of Fatania. He ends his turn. During his upkeep, Folger lets his Mystic Remora die. He plays a Misty Rainforest for turn. He cracks it for an island. He casts a Cursed Totem. That card hates on a lot of strategies at the table, but it resolves. Folger falls up by casting a Windfall. Windfall resolves, everyone discards their hand, with Ryan discarding his gamble target, Squee the Immortal, and everyone draws 5. 
Folger then reminds everyone that Smothering Tithe is still on the board, and Folger creates 15 treasures. Next, Folger casts his commander, Alela, Artful Provocateur. He then follows up with a blind obedience. Alela triggers, and Folger creates a fairy token. Folger then casts Grasp of Fate. Blind Obedience Extort triggers, and Folger pays for it, making everyone lose one life, and Folger gaining three. Alela triggers, and Folger creates another fairy token. Then Grasp of Fate enters. Folger exiles Mike's Soul Ring, Garrett's Falwar Stone, and Ryan's Exploration. Next, Folger casts Tangle Wire. He extorts through Blind Obedience again, and creates another fairy. All through, and in a pretty good position, Folger passes to Garrett. During his upkeep, Garrett taps permanence through Tangle Wire. He plays a Waterlog Grove for turn. He taps the Grove to cast Elvish Mystic, which enters the battlefield tap through Blind Obedience. Feeling not great, he passes to Mike. During his upkeep, Mike taps permanence through Tangle Wire. He plays a Bayou for turn. He casts Priest of Titania, which also enters tap through Blind Obedience. He ends his turn. During his upkeep, Ryan also taps permanence through Tangle Wire. He also plays a Bayou for turn. With nothing else, he passes. During his upkeep, Folger removes a Fade Counter from Tangle Wire and taps permanence. He also loses his Mana Crypt trigger and takes 3 damage. He plays a Hallowed Fountain, into play tapped. He attacks Mike with his Commander and his Fairies. Mike takes 8, and Folger gains 2 through Alela. In his second main phase, Folger casts Chrome Mox. He extorts through Blind Obedience and creates a Fairy. Chrome Mox's imprint triggers, and Folger decides not to imprint anything, instead wanting to keep the cards in his hand, since he mainly just wanted to get the extort and the Fairy. All through, he passes. During his upkeep, Garrett taps for Tangle Wire. He casts an Arbor Elf. He then casts Sensei's Top. Top enters Tapped, which feels extra bad. He passes to Mike. During his upkeep, Mike taps for Tangle Wire. He plays a Marsh Flats for turn. He casts Spellseeker. Spellseeker resolves, and Mike searches up an abrupt decay into his hand. He casts an Arbor Elf. He cracks his Marsh Flats for an Overgrown Tomb into play Untapped, paying 2 life. He casts Elves of Deep Shadow and passes to Ryan. At the end of Mike's turn, Ryan casts Crop Rotation, sacrificing Overgrown Tomb to fetch up a Blast Zone onto the battlefield. During his upkeep, Ryan taps for Tangle Wire. He draws his card, looks at his board, then passes the turn. During his upkeep, Folger removes a Fade Counter from Tangle Wire and then taps Permanence. He casts a Demir Signet. He extorts through Blind Obedience and creates another Fairy. He attacks Mike for 10 and gains 2 life. Folger passes. During his upkeep, Garrett taps for Tangle Wire. Also during his upkeep, he spins his top to look at the top 3. He casts a Chrome Mox, imprinting Dovin's Veto. He ends his turn. During his upkeep, Mike taps Permanence for Tangle Wire. He plays a Waterlog Grove for turn. He attacks Folger with Kenrith for 5. Mike ships a turn to Ryan. During his upkeep, and in response to the Tangle Wire trigger, Ryan adds a counter to his Blast Zone, then taps the rest of his Permanence. He draws a card for turn, and all tapped out, passes. During his upkeep, Folger loses his Mana Crypt trigger and takes 3 damage. He removes a counter from Tangle Wire and taps Tangle Wire to itself. He starts off his turn by attacking Mike for 12 and gaining 2 from Alela. He casts Phyrexian Arena, extorting and creating a fairy. He passes the turn. At the end of Folger's turn, Garrett spends his top. During his upkeep, Garrett taps for Tangle Wire. He casts a Mana Ball, which enters tapped thanks to Blind Obedience and feels extra bad about it. With nothing else, he passes. At the end of Garrett's turn, Mike casts Abrupt Decay, targeting Folger's Cursed Totem. He then taps his Mana Dorks and sinks it into Kenrith's ability three times, gaining 15 life. He then taps Waterlog Grove to activate Kenrith again, drawing a card. During his upkeep, Mike taps a Permanent for Tangle Wire. Also during his upkeep, he casts Worldly Tutor, fetching up an Incubation Druid onto the top of his library. In his main phase, Mike casts Vigian Graph Mage which goes infinite with Incubation Druid, so everyone goes on high alert. In response to the cast, Garrett spins his top and then casts Silence, trying to stop Mike. In response, Mike activates Kenrith, drawing a card. He then casts Vampiric Tutor, fetching up a card onto the top of his library and losing two life. He then activates Kenrith again to draw a card he just tutored. Mike then casts a card, which is a Pact of Negation. In response, Garrett spins his top again, rearranging the top three. Garrett then flips his top, drawing a card and putting it onto the top of his library. He then cast Force of Negation, exiling a blue card from his hand, targeting Pact. With no other answers, Pact is countered and Silence resolves. Then Vigian Graph Mage resolves. 
Now silenced and unable to go off, Mike passes the turn. During his upkeep, Ryan taps for Tanglewire. He casts a Lotus Petal for turn. He taps his Badlands for red. He plays Lake of the Dead, sacking his Badlands. He taps Bayou for black. With a game win from Mike Eminent and Folger and Garrett spent from trying to stop Mike, Ryan decides that it is his time to try and win. He casts Tainted Pact. With no answers, Pact resolves and Ryan begins to flip. He already tells everyone ahead of time what he's looking for, which is a food chain in order to win. So he begins to flip. And flip. And flip. And flip, trying to find his food chain. With each opponent trying their best to give Ryan bad juju, Ryan finally finds his food chain, which was the sixth card from the bottom. He was almost certain he exiled away his win cons, but he believes he has just one more, so he goes for it. He casts Food Chain, and it resolves. He exiles Priest of Titania for three red through Food Chain. He then casts Squee the Immortal from his graveyard. He begins a loop with Squee, exiling it to Food Chain and recasting it, gaining infinite mana of all colors for creatures. He then casts his commander, Corvul, sacking Squee to draw a card. He shows a loop, exiling Corvold to Food Chain, recasting Scree, and then recasting Corvold, sacking the Squee again to draw the rest of his deck. Unfortunately, he did in fact exile away all of his win cons through Tainted Pact, and has no other outs to win the game. He casts Yawgmoth's Will, and casts Noxious Revival from his graveyard to put a card on top of his library. He casts a Teamer Sabertooth from his graveyard as well. Looking a bit more, and seeing there is no way out, he accepts defeat and passes the turn. During his upkeep, Folger removes the final counter from Tanglewire. He draws a card from Phyrexian Arena and loses one life. He plays a Plains for turn. He attacks Mike with his creatures for 14. Mike declares no blocks, and before damage, he taps his Elves of Deep Shadow to help pay for Kenrith, gaining 5 life. Mike takes the damage, and Folger gains 2. With nothing else, Folger passes. During Garrett's draw step, he takes the damage through Mana Vault. He casts Sensei's Top, which enters tapped. He spends the top to look at the top three. He cracks his Waterlog Grove to draw a card, hoping to find something. He casts what he found, which is a Finehorn Elves. He passes the turn to Mike. On his turn, Mike casts Incubation Druid, which enters taps. Vigian Grass Mage's trigger goes onto the stack, and Mike moves a 1-1 counter onto it. He then activates Vigian Grass Mage to untap Incubation Druid. He activates Kimrith, giving all creatures trample and haste. He demonstrates his loop using Incubation Druid and Vigian Graph Mage to make infinite blue mana. He activates Kenrith, drawing his entire deck. He casts Silence to ensure no one else can cast spells for the rest of the turn. He then activates Kenrith, making everyone draw their entire library and lose the game. Ladies and gentlemen, what a way to kick off the season. Congratulations to Mike on his win. Kenrith's toolbox abilities make for so many possible lines, and Mike used him in a lot of different ways, saving himself multiple times from death. This commander is going to be a real force to be reckoned with. Ryan's deck floundered for a number of turns, and he couldn't get the draws that he wanted. His final shot was very explosive, and he would have won the game had it not been for the bad luck with his tainted pack. Sometimes that's a calculated risk you take with cards like that. Folger's Commander doesn't seem like it would be a CEDH deck at first glance, but Folger demonstrated that advantage engines combined with control and value pieces can definitely take a hold of a game. Had Folger not drawn poorly in his last turn, he could have taken out Mike and started to win. Garrett's deck just didn't deliver like Garrett wanted tonight. Poor draws combined with stacks elements hurting his board made it so that he just couldn't get ahead. In the end, his control elements only delayed Mike's win. The player of the game was Folger. He definitely had board advantage and stacks elements hurting everyone's board state. His control was what everyone else was trying to overcome the whole game. The most valuable card goes to Kenrith. This commander just seemed to have an answer for everything. Low life? Need haste? Draw cards? And that isn't even everything he can do. And it's on a formidable body, too. A 5-5 is nothing to write off. We predict this card is going to start making a few waves in the CDH community, and we're looking forward to it. Well, that about wraps it up for our season premiere. Tune in next time when we duke it out to see who will be king of a competitive EDH table. 
Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you next time.